Okay guys, Coach Jacob here. Um, the view is a little different for this. I'm learning how to fix things as I go. So thank you for bearing with me. The content's the same, the view should be better. Um, on this video, we're gonna discuss the different moments of the game. So if you can think back all the way to winter when we did our winter training, um, typically before each practice, I would say what our uh, concept of the day was. So typically that'd be like building out of the back, possession through the midfield, um, attacking in the final third, and then the transitional moments. So in this video, we're just gonna talk through where we get those uh, moments and how we create our practice um, around those moments so that we can replicate the game in our training environment. So uh, that is the point of that. Okay, let's talk about the zones and the moments of the game that we create our practices around. So I'm gonna use these lines to, to represent the different thirds of the field. Um, I think this is one of the easiest ways to think about it and um, explain how we want to um, play in each given zone. So if we're defending this goal, so this is our goalie, this is our player number one, um, this will be our defensive zone and we're going forward. So defensive zone, this would be what? Our middle zone, our middle third, and then our attacking zone, our attacking third. So defensive third, middle third, attacking third. So those are three moments in and of themselves. Remember, we talked about in the winter, building out of the back. So if it's a goal kick, we want to build out of our defensive zone. So that was what we worked on that day. Possession in the midfield. How do we want to possess? Where do our runs need to be? We're in tight spaces. We have lots of players. We have to be quick. 360 degree vision, right? So we talked about those at a practice like that. And then we have the attacking zone. Um, not a lot of space, quick decision making, um, getting shots off quickly, okay? So that's how you, uh, just a brief scenario of the attacking third. So there's three moments. Then we have those transition moments. So the transition from the defensive third, uh, the defensive third into the middle third, and the transition from the middle third into the attacking third. Why that's important is because if you're a beautiful possession team and you just work the ball back and forth in the middle third and uh, have great possession, but you never get that transition into the final third, it doesn't really matter how great your possession is. You're not going to create many opportunities to score or to go forward. So let's think about that. Zone number one is the defensive third. Zone number two is the middle third. Zone number three is the um, attacking third. Then we have another moment of the game, the transition from the defensive to the middle third. And the uh, uh, part number five, the transition from the middle third to the attacking third. So there's five moments of the game right there. There's five practices that we could have just on the uh, main, when we have possession of the ball. Now, if you think of the opposite of all these scenarios, we can go on the other side of the field and we have defending in the attacking third. That can be... Um, Part six, how do we prevent the other team from building out? Okay, zone seven, or a part of the game number seven. How do we prevent the other team from building through their midfield? How do we take away the angles and prevent the build out? So what do we do without position of the ball in the middle zone? And then zone number eight, uh, part number eight, how do we defend in the uh, defensive zone, right? Forcing the opponent out of uh, out wide, you know, not letting them get shots off and stuff like that. Same thing, we have the transitional moments. Nine, preventing them from transitioning out. So preventing them from getting from their defensive zone and out, right? Like it's okay if they possess here, but we don't want them to build uh, transition out of that area. Same thing, the last piece is part number 10. That transition from um, the middle third to the their attacking third. If we can prevent them from breaking into our defensive third, we don't have to worry about giving up goal scoring opportunities. It's all about calculating your risks and preventing um, them from getting forward. And those are the defensive moments. So while we have five attacking moments when we have possession of the ball, we have the same uh, but opposite five when we don't have possession of the ball. And these are the moments that we create our practices around because um, this is how, these are the moments of the game. And if we can create a practice plan that rep uh, replicates that part of the game, then we are preparing, right? We're preparing for the situations that are going to come, okay? Um, and so, yeah, that is pretty much it. Now, I do wanna take a second to remind everyone that these are the moments that I use. These are the moments that I will be coaching. You could break these moments down even further. 
Um, U.S. soccer breaks them down, uh, doesn't break them down very much at all. I think they only keep it to three in total when we have possession of the ball. So, But I like to explain the way I do things so that when, when I run a training session or when your coach runs a training session, you can see what our concepts are. If we're building out of the back, we're in our defensive zone and we want to go forward. If we're building through the midfield, how do we act? What's our body shape when we receive the ball? So that way, when we go into the game, we're replicating what we did in training. We remember the situations that we were in in the training session, and then we can adapt to the game. Because obviously, when, when you have 11 versus 11, or 7 versus 7, or 9 v 9, whatever numbers you have, it's a lot different than training, right? When we have 5 v 3s, or when we have... Um, more players on offense or more players on defense given the situation when it's equal numbers that's what becomes difficult okay i hope that this video um, helped you guys understand how we create our sessions and our training plans and how we focus on the moments of the game to prepare you for when you're actually playing so if your practice can replicate the game you're just that much better off when it comes to the situations that are thrown at you um, in the fluidity of the game. You know, soccer is one of those, uh, is, is one of the greatest sports because there's no timeout. Um, there's very few stoppages of play, right? So you have to be able to adapt quickly. And so replicating the moments in the uh, training environment is what is uh, going to set you up for the most success uh, when you hit the field. So hope this helped. Hope this made sense. Leave comments below if you have questions or want to say hi. Uh, and I'll see you in the next one.